That's kind of cool. I'd like to know how they can put rebar in it and make these things not just That's crumble. That's a good question. That's a very good That's, question. So yeah. you're telling me that if we just keep slapping cement higher and higher, it's going to stay okay? Well, There's no rebar. But how do they do that? Because you'd need a gigantic printer. So, to me because so far, I haven't seen anything that, like, really impresses me we in this should, area. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my video. And please do make sure to check out my website, 3D-printed-house.com. That's what I'm actually trying to build. And that's also where you can subscribe to my newsletter if you really want to stay up to date on news on the 3D printed house and some investment opportunities just like whatever I can find. But without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, I have heard a lot of problems about 3D printed houses, but I feel like the major problem with the industry is being ignored. If you look around the internet for problems with the 3D printed house, you get arguments such as they look cheap, or they wonder how one could add rebar to the 3D printed structures. That's probably because most of those who do these shows or podcasts might be engineers, but they don't have much knowledge of 3D printed construction, so a lot of them seem to be taking educated guesses. And this content gets a lot of attention because when you look at how construction 3D printing is portrayed in the media, it often seems too good to be true, not gonna lie. And even I, when I first heard of 3D printed houses, I went to Google and typed in 3D printed house problem. And then the first article that pops up is uh, pretty decent, but very outdated. It's by Architizer, and they say uh, that 3D printed buildings can't be made functional, like they can create decorative structures. But, well, right now in Nantes, there's already a building in which a family lives for over two years. I think that one is. <laughs> that problem is gone. And uh, the next website is called Treehugger. And what they try to point out is that 3D printed houses don't fix any problem because the housing problem has never been technological, it's economical. And this honestly made me cringe a little, yeah, 3D printed houses don't solve poverty, I'm sorry, but the goal is to provide cheaper houses so even people in poverty can afford shelter and thus live a more comfortable life. And I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Solving poverty has never been the claim. And, then, and that's not the case either, then what are the problems with the 3D printed house? So you can see it's not the rebar. They don't have to look cheap, as you can see here. And I don't think there should be any safety concerns. Why the 3D printed house is fairly safe is something you can read more about. My article on safety, please do. <laughs> but in short, the structures they produce are by regular concrete structures. The technology of how they got there isn't as important as like what concrete slab you're using and the architectural background. Okay, the Chinese company Winston even claimed that their houses were designed to withstand an 8 on a Richter scale, like an earthquake, which is pretty high and would be pretty impressive. And so maybe, maybe the 3D printed house has no problems, if the safety is not a concern either. Maybe the industry is perfect and maybe we can trust them and assume that 3D printed houses are the greatest invention since the wheel? Well, short answer, no. 3D printed houses are great. I'm a big fan of them, but the huge problem with 3D printed houses is the lack of transparency in the industry. Let me explain what I mean. Recently, one of the main companies in the business of 3D printed construction called Cobot from Denmark has released a white paper on the current state of 3D printed construction, and it looks vastly different from what the press has been telling us. I do realize that some of you are going to take what follows with a grain of salt, since Cobot, being in the industry themselves, definitely might appear biased, but personally, I trust this white paper, not only since it has been released in cooperation with the Danish government after three years of study, but they also back up all of their claims with evidence, and if they didn't, I'm 99% sure they would immediately face a huge lawsuit. For the skeptics among you, we will analyze other sources later. First of all, they take one of the world's leaders in 3D printed houses, Winston. The Chinese 3D printed housing 
uh, reputation already took a big hit when the company King Dao Unique Products announced the biggest construction printer in the world. However, then when people urged them to show it to the world, it was a lonely device in the middle of a large hall without a print head, so they had no intention of ever actually printing concrete with it. Now, the problem with the 3D printed house by Winsome is uh, that they don't actually print on site, or to be exact, that they aren't transparent about printing off site. And they don't go anywhere with their printer, they just print objects in their hall and then they assemble them on site. And if you look around YouTube, you'll quickly realize the only published video of them printing is in a large hall. So, in other words, they simply print 3D printed parts and then move them to the desired location and assemble them there. Which has more implications. To quote Koba, this also means that, therefore, when Winsun claimed to have done 10 buildings in 10 days, it actually meant that they assembled 10 buildings in 10 days out of elements 3D printed in the factory long before. It does not mean that the entire process of 3D printing and assembling at site took just 10 days. Also, the very interesting architecture in Winston's buildings is apparently made by traditional constructions, it's not in the 3D printer, which I find kind of kind of sad because their architecture was pretty impressive. However, please don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying the problem with the 3D printed house is the fact that they don't print on site. Maybe that is the future of 3D printed construction, I don't know. My problem is they should have been more upfront about it. Also, I think it's definitely too soon for them to call themselves the leader of 3D printed architecture. The next company which has raised some misunderstandings to say the least is Apiscor. I have to start out by giving credit where credit is due. Apiscore definitely has had a lot of success in the 3D printed construction industry and as you can see they had a very impressive performance in the NASA 3D printed habitat challenge and have already printed plenty of buildings for example for Dubai. Nevertheless they have had some problems as well. I'm not sure if that that was even intentional from their part, but many people also thought that their building had been 3D printed in 24 hours, but all they said in the press release actually was that it would be possible to print a building in 24 hours. In my opinion, they could have more open prints that are often reserved for Russian speakers only, and furthermore, at least as of fall 2019, they are in research and development mode and don't actually sell any printers. Okay, no company is getting a pass today, so next company is Icon. Icon has raised a lot of attention to themselves when partnering up with a non-profit new story in order to 3D print houses for the homeless, which is a great idea in my opinion. As of January 2021, the video has been viewed four and a half million times and thus has introduced a lot of people to 3D printing houses who probably had no idea about it before. As Icon CEO said in an interview on Better Shelter, it's important for sustainable housing to be sexy and cool. And I think, honestly, they kind of managed to do that. The 3D printed houses look slick, definitely an improvement over older models. Even the printer looks very decent. I'm unsure though if this is the ideal solution long term, since printers like this might create difficulties, as uh, maybe they might take longer to set up or all that plastic around that might get caught up in the wind. There definitely can be some issues compared to a very basic gantry style printer, but I'm not saying it can't work. So in the aforementioned video they said the printer can print a house in under 24 hours. Can. Nobody has ever printed a house in under 24 hours, even without considering setting up the printer, building the roof and some extras. As you can see in their own video, the sun rises and sets multiple times during the construction process, which again, only included the walls. No one is 3D printing the roof on top, no one is 3D printing plumbing, windows, no one. Again here, I would have wished a little more transparency on how long the project actually took them, but nevertheless, I think that's it for my video. If you learned something, please do subscribe, check out my website. 
That's what I'm actually trying to build, 3D-printed-house.com. Also, check out James Lyman and Jared Gross if you want to learn more about automated construction. Take care, guys. Take care, guys.